Here are six quick tips on how to learn CAD and three things that you want to avoid. First off, for learning CAD, the most effective method is by taking an instructor-led training class with a qualified instructor. In these days of COVID, you're seeing a lot of live online. Hey, that is great as well. And I think we're going to see a lot more live online post-pandemic. Also, if your company or you can get a subscription to web-based training, that also helps. So for example, in Creo, you can get Learn or you can get Precision LMS. Me personally, I am in Precision LMS all the time. With Onshape, you have learn.onshape.com. Tons of free web-based training classes there that you can take at your own pace. Second, watch videos. And I'm not advocating this just because I have a YouTube channel with videos on there. I use videos a lot, especially when I'm trying to learn a new CAD package. And especially if you can build this into your daily routine, you will increase your skill level at an incredible rate. And I found that just about every CAD package has an excellent channel. So for example, with SolidWorks, I like Go Engineers channel. For Fusion 360, I am subscribed to Lars Christensen's channel. I apologize if I mispronounced the last name. There are lots of good YouTube channels out there for learning CAD. Third, create models and drawings. Take a look at stuff around you and model that up as a part or an assembly and then create a drawing of it. Or if there's something that you want to make for yourself, you want to 3D print something, you want to build a toy set for your kid, hey, model that up in CAD. There's the old joke, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. And also, if you take a look on the internet or in bookstores, you can find books with engineering drawings. You can try find websites with engineering drawings. Try to replicate those models in CAD. And also, there is a book by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, which is the source of the famous 10,000 hours milestone in order to achieve mastery. If you are working in CAD, you can assume that you get about a thousand hours of solid CAD driving time per year, which means, hey, it can reasonably take about 10 years to master CAD software. This is not something that you're going to do overnight. Next up, learn your CAD packages philosophy. I love the movie Star Trek II Wrath of Khan, and there is a great scene in there. Captain Kirk says to Lieutenant Savick, you have to learn why things work on a starship. And the same thing applies to CAD packages. You have to figure out why that CAD package does the things that it does. What were the driving principles that the people who made that CAD package followed when they were coming up with the different workflows and processes. So for example, in Creo, I always talk about design intent. Design intent drives everything. If you take a look at SolidWorks, if you ever have the chance to meet up with David Corcoran, he will talk about how SolidWorks was the first CAD package that was available for Windows PCs. It was bringing CAD for the masses. And also Onshape, it was the first cloud-based CAD. So some of those different things influence how the software works. If you understand that philosophy, you will understand the CAD package better. Next, teach others. Teaching others is the best way to learn a subject. And I don't mean that you have to become an instructor. Maybe at your company, you might teach other people how to sketch, maybe deliver a half hour class on that, or maybe a half hour on how to create assemblies. And if you're going to teach others, I highly recommend that you follow the Feynman technique. He is one of my heroes, physicist professor at Caltech, and he had four steps in his technique for teaching others. First, you want to study, you want to learn and research the topic that you are going to teach. Second, you want to teach that subject, and preferably you want to teach it to real live human beings so that you can see their responses and understand the questions that they have. Based on the response, when you teach that class, you want to figure out where your gaps are in explaining that subject and then fill in those gaps with additional study and research. And then finally, you want to simplify the process. So for example, Professor Feynman, 
he had this whole philosophy. He has these series of lectures on physics, and he would take the most complicated subjects in physics and teach it at a freshman level. You should do the same thing with CAD, not at a college freshman level, but even at a high school level. And if you can get high school students to understand that subject, then they will learn it better. And also, if you're capable of teaching that subject, you will learn CAD better. And sixth technique, learn a second CAD package. So for me, Creo Parametric, or actually Pro Engineer back in the day, was my fourth CAD package. And because it was my fourth CAD package, it enabled me to pick it up faster. And learning a second CAD package will make you better at the previous CAD package. There's always something that you can learn by learning another CAD package. The other thing is, these days, it is rare to find a company that is only on a single CAD package. And a lot of companies, maybe if they're on a single CAD package, they will still have vendors or design partners who are working in a different CAD package. So multi-CAD is the norm today. And so I recommend if you learn one CAD package, again, you'll be better at the other. For example, SolidWorks made me better at Creo Parametric, and then learning Onshape helped me at SolidWorks, and then learning Fusion 360 helped me with the other ones. Hey, the more that you learn, the better you are going to be. And along those lines, I always tell people it's time for the CAD Wars, and it's time to stop bashing other CAD packages. Just because you like one CAD package doesn't mean that the others are bad. So just be open-minded, learn all that you can. And now let's talk about three techniques that I find are bad for learning CAD. First off, when you are learning a CAD package, I recommend that you avoid trying to do the one-to-one -one equivalent. Hey, this is how I do this in SOLIDWORKS, so what is the equivalent command in Creo? Well, there might not be an equivalent command, and there might not be an equivalent workflow. It's better to sort of like almost start with a blank slate in your mind and then figure out, okay, this is what this CAD package recommends. Second one I avoid is learning from the local expert or the neighbor or the someone who's nearby you. For example, you have Mr. Vegas in the movie Stripes who's trying to teach his buddy how to learn poker. They might have an ulterior motive in mind or they might be bad at the subject themselves. And so if you're learning from a bad person, bad techniques, you are going to be bad at CAD. And third one that I recommend avoiding Group message systems, stuff like HipChat and Slack are all the rage these days. And the problem is they enable bad information to be disseminated at a faster rate than ever. And those systems tend to amplify the loudest voices who are not necessarily the most knowledgeable. So again, I find those different group messaging systems that you find in a lot of product development organizations not to be the great place to learn. So I hope that gave you some tips on how you can become better at CAD software. Thank you for watching. My name is Dave Martin, and you can reach me at dmartin at creowindshield.com.